the air filter cover has a crack in it going almost all the way across. Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear. I'm JB, giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. This is a Generac pressure washer. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, JB, doesn't Generac make generators? Sure do. And they make some darn good ones at that. But they also make a line of pressure washers. And generally speaking, they have some really good ratings too. I'll have this one and some other Generac pressure washers linked down below in the description. Just so we're clear here, I have no affiliation with Generac. Mm. I bought this Generac pressure washer with my own money so that way you know you're getting an honest review. The model number on this unit is 8874, and it has been engineered and built here in the USA, which is kind of nice because everything nowadays pretty much comes from overseas. And to top it all off, it comes with a two-year warranty, which is pretty solid. All right, let's dive right in here. Slice and dice. Ooh. Oh, you fancy. This is kind of interesting. They put some individual pieces in some spots here. We have our SAE 30 motor oil. We have our gun wand. Then this looks like our soap hose. And let me pull this guy off. Ah, okay. I thought the gas cap was sitting here on top. It's right there. This unit looks pretty beefy here just sitting in the box. A little dusty. Looks like Halloween in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this box down so we can pull this unit out safely so I don't hurt my back. Drop it down. Now I can access some other things. We have our trigger handle. We have our hose at the bottom. This is our upper handlebar assembly. Peel this guy off. Looking sharp. Come on out, pal. On the back side, we have our instruction manual with some other goodies inside the bag. Now I'm gonna lift this guy up just a little bit to get the styrofoam off. There we go. Set her down. So here's my unit out of the box. I'm gonna pop my upper handlebar assembly right on. It's pretty simple. You just insert the tubes, little push button, slide them down. <sighs> You're stronger than this. Oh, come on, JB, slide it down. Your wife is watching. This guy just doesn't wanna go down. There it goes. One, two, good. That was a really tight fit on the pipe right there. Let's remove the plastic down from these wheels. Same thing here on this side, just peel it right off. All right, so let's have a look at our instruction manual here on the workbench. We have our owner's manual, we have our Generac registration form, and you could enter to win a $100 Visa gift card. I might take advantage of that. And then we have our two-year limited warranty information. Then inside we also have our trigger holder, our nozzle lens, our hose hook, and a couple of plastic screws. So our next step here is going to be putting our trigger mount on the back of the handlebar. So pretty simple, we got two holes here, we have our trigger mount, we're gonna put that right here behind it, and then we're just gonna take these little plastic screws and insert them. There we go, that's one, and two. Surprisingly, that's actually pretty strong. I would probably opt for a metal bolt here, but we'll see how it holds up. Seems sturdy enough. And then back here, we're gonna insert our hose hook. We're just gonna put one end in, and then the other. Done. So next we have our hose nozzles. I'm gonna put these in these four holes here. I'm gonna coordinate them with the diagram here on the back of the pressure washer. I'm gonna put red, which is for blasting, basically a straight shot. Stick it right in. Green for clean, right there in the middle. Black for soap washing. I'm gonna stick that right there in the center too. And then white for regular washing. Now here we have our gun and then we have our extension wand and I have to connect the two just like this by spinning them together. But before I do that, I always like to use some plumber's tape and wrap it around to ensure that no leaks will happen. Perfect. Twist it right in, wind that baby down tight. You want this nice and snug, crank it down. Can even get a wrench on this bad boy and get a little bit more leverage that way. Good, she's tight. Now we're gonna bring our hose into play here and we're gonna snip off these strings that are holding it all together. Oh, what's this say? Nothing. Maybe it's got invisible ink when it gets wet, it'll tell you something. Subscribe to Garage Gear, I bet that's what it says. Or hit the like button so this video does great with the YouTube algorithm. Now we're gonna take the bottom of the gun, twist off this little cap. Same thing here, we're gonna wrap some plumber's tape around this. All set, stick one end of the hose on, crank it down. There you go, nice and tight. Bam, that's solid right there. I gotta mention this, this has a nice flexible end here so that way you're not beating up on the hose so much as you're yanking this gun all around your yard. Now let's connect the other end to the pump. I'm gonna take this protective cap off. Here's our water outlet. We're gonna again take some plumber's tape, wrap that around, prevent any leaks from happening, and good. And from here, thread on your other end. Solid. That looks great. Then we have our soap tube. Let's open this bad boy up. There's your hose. Now if you were to use this hose for soap, you would take this end right here and then insert it right onto this little nozzle just like that, and then this little end goes into your soap bucket. Oh, what do we have here? Engine must be filled with oil before starting. See operator's manual for the use of proper oil checking and filling procedures. Let's do it. So just so we're clear here on the oil filling procedures, the best side to fill the oil on would be here on this side. Then on the other side, you have another fill spout, but it's a little harder to get to. These engines are designed this way to fit multiple applications, so they usually have two spouts, but you do have a nice drain spout right here with a hole through the deck, so that way you can just put your pan here under 
underneath and drain all the oil out. That's kind of nice. I would probably recommend tipping this side up, maybe on a block of wood, just so that way it doesn't drip all into this pan. It goes right out the hole. I'm gonna put some cad bad down over here. And from here, we're gonna pop out our dipstick, see what that looks like. They usually ship these units with a little bit of oil on them. That way nothing corrodes inside the engine block. Only a little bit was inside, so we gotta fill her up. And when we fill it up, we're gonna get that oil level between these little hash marks here on the dipstick. Once it's between these little hash marks, we're good. These little long spout funnels are pretty handy. I'm gonna take my oil that they gave us, and I'm gonna pour just a little bit in at a time. That way we can check it, see if we're at the right height, and if we need to add more, we can just add more. Boom, 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 boom. It was maybe about half. Okay, so let's check and see where we're at. We're just gonna insert our dipstick here. The instruction manual says to insert the dipstick to check it all the way in, and then back it out. What do you know? A little over halfway, maybe three quarters up the dipstick. Not bad. Right where we need it to be. Now here's a little heads up. I only used about three quarters of this entire container of oil. This is SA30 but I wanna show you something else. This right here is the temperature ranges for the different kinds of oils that you can put in this unit. They gave us SAE 30 up top, which ranges from about 50 degrees to over 100. You could go with 10W30, which gives you the widest range from zero all the way over 100. Or if you choose to use 5W30, that'll be less than 32 degrees and below. So it sounds like the best option here is gonna be 10W30 oil. Okay, now that we're fully assembled, let's go over the facts on this unit. Here's the numbers, 2,900 PSI and 2.4 gallons per minute. Those are pretty solid numbers and they're slightly higher than my previous Ryobi pressure washer. So we should feel a little extra kick in the cleaning power. The unit has four different nozzle tips ranging from zero degrees, 25 degrees, 40 degrees, plus a soap applicator. The soap cleaning nozzle allows you to tackle various cleaning tasks with ease. This unit does not include a soap tank, more on that later. There's a 25 foot high pressure hose on this unit and the entire unit runs on a 196 cc gas powered Generac overhead valve engine. Out of the box, the unit weighs approximately 57 pounds and it has never flat wheels, AKA plastic, except these ones are coated with a rubber tread. Well, if you're ready, I'm ready. It's time to do some power washing. Now here's what I like about this Generac pressure washer. The engine and the pump have plenty of cleaning power. The engine on this unit has a horizontal drive shaft. In my experience, I've seen less issues with pressure washers using a horizontal drive shaft. These engines are Honda clones and they're stamped with a Generac label on them. Pretty easy to start, choke it, pull it, and then simply set the choke back once it's up and running. The gas tank on this unit is 0.8 gallons, which should give you plenty of runtime. It even has a fuel shutoff valve, which is a nice feature to have, and I'll use that feature quite a bit. If you change the oil on this engine, at least once a season and then run ethanol free gas in it all the time, this engine should last you a really, really long time. Maintenance on this engine is also very simple. The carburetor is easy to access and oil changes look relatively straightforward with that hole in the bottom of the deck. Now on my last pressure washer, I had to get really low to the ground to hook up and unhook my hoses. And that got a little annoying. On this unit, it's kind of nice. They're about a foot higher off the ground. The axial cam pump with easy access hose connections is a little higher up, which makes taking care of them easier without having to kneel on the ground. The pressure washer has a more ergonomic spray gun with an easy grip pull trigger that reduces fatigue. Notice how this one is from the bottom up rather than from the top down. Kind of different, kind of cool. This unit is relatively easy to maneuver around. Plus, as I mentioned earlier, this unit comes with really good ratings. 4.4 out of five stars on almost 2,000 reviews. That's crazy. The other various models have decent reviews too. Now, no machine is perfect, but here's what grinds my gears with this pressure washer. The air filter cover has a crack in it going almost all the way across. I am going to contact the company and see if I can get them to send me a new one. I'll let you know how that goes. We'll put their customer service to the test. Now, a lot of pressure washer companies do this when you buy a brand new pressure washer, the extension wand coming out of the gun is usually a little shorter. They do this to cut costs, but if you're pressure washing for an extended period of time, that constant leaning forward to reach down, especially if you're a taller person, that is going to start to ache your back and probably your shoulder as you're moving that gun around. I have a longer shaft on my old Ryobi pressure washer that I can take off that one and put on this one. I also do wish that the oil change spot was a little higher up. That would make oil changes a little easier. Not a big game changer, but it would be nice. Now this grinds my gears for you 
The model has no soap container. To me, that's really not a game changer because I just don't use that feature. I don't use soap or bleach, I just use straight water. And I don't like getting all those chemicals on my lawn. Now there's gonna be those few out there that are gonna be like, hey man, you should use chemicals and soaps. Don't eat them. Never have and I get great results every single time. Now for you, the average consumer who might want that feature, you may wanna consider looking at another model that has that soap tank. Now the alternative to that is you take that hose that we mentioned earlier, stick the one end into a bucket full of soap, and you're good to go. To wrap this all up, is this a solid pressure washer? Yes. Does it have a good amount of cleaning power? Yes. Does it allow for other attachments? Plenty. Is this a good pressure washer for larger properties? I would venture to say that this is a decent unit for small to medium properties, but could still handle the occasional larger property. For more cool garage gear content, click or tap the screen right here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the garage.